Hello. So, we've seen already the sort of intuition of what's driving linear approximation, what it's trying to do. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the technical aspects, actually building the formula and showing how to actually do it, you know, with the whole derivative and all the actual calculus-y stuff. So, remember, linear approximation, right, is this idea, this process of using some nearby, easy-to-calculate input and use that to sort of figure out some not easy to calculate uh, point, right, by using a tangent line and approximating that value. So the example that we're sort of using, right, is calculating square root of 10. So we can think of this as just being, say, the square root of x, um, and then we're trying to sort of find when x is 10, which is difficult, but nearby when x is 9, that's easy, right, because we can take the square root of 9, and that's just 3. So we are going to use the function square root of x, and the nearby point that's easy to calculate is when x is 9, and the point that's difficult to calculate that we're going to approximate, that's going to be when x is 10, okay? So the plan here then is to try to use calculus, right, use derivatives to find a tangent line and approximate that value. But the real question here is, can we sort of capture this into one sort of nicely stated formula, right? We don't want to, like, necessarily have to go through the thinking process every single time. We want to sort of figure out the general case so that we can sort of capture it all in one sort of setting. All right, so if you remember when we talked about this before, we had this sort of nice picture where uh, we had the, right, the, the A was the part that was sort of easy to calculate, um, B was the part that was hard to calculate, and then we sort of went through this estimate, right? So we had the difference here. So in our example, right, 9 is that A, our B is going to be that 10. Our estimate is going to be some value, which is going to be sort of close, right? It's going to have some level of error. And in our case, since we're going from 9 to 10, our, our delta X is going to be 1, okay? So remember, though, that the whole point here, and I'll just point this out again here, is that we're using this tangent line, right? We're not using the whole tangent line. We're just going from A to sort of the, where X is B, even though it's not quite the right spot, but we're just using a tangent line. And remember that tangent lines are formulas, right? We, we've already sort of done a whole section about finding tangent lines to a point on a curve. And so we could basically just find that formula, right? So if we found the formula for the tangent line, sort of ignoring all of the linear approximation and all of the other stuff and just ask this in the frame of like, hey, find a tangent line to square root of x at x equals 9, we could then use that formula and plug in the hard-to-find point, that x being b, or in our case 10, and that would give us the approximation. That would literally give us the linear approximation value, okay? So to that end, right, as a maybe hopefully a bit of a refresher, uh, the slope of a tangent line, right? So we need the derivative at that point, so that f prime of a, and we need the point itself, which is just that a comma f of a. So again, in the case of the square root uh, part that we're looking at, a is 9, the easy to calculate thing, so we need f prime of 9, and then our point would be 9 comma square root of 9, which would be 9 comma 3. Thus, our formula for the tangent line, right, keep, keep this in mind, our formula for the tangent line is just this thing, right? We have the slope, we have the sort of the point form, right? So the y equals m, the slope, uh, x plus b, or in this case, we have the x minus x1 plus y1, right? So the x minus a, a is that point we're finding it at, and f of a is the y point of where we're finding this tangent line at. Okay, so that means if we sort of get that formula, right? This is the, again, the generic formula for the, the tangent line, but then we can plug in b as the x value because that's what we're trying to estimate, right? So again, we're, we're going through the tangent line. So we found a tangent line, tangent at a, or at x equals a, and we want to estimate the value of b by using that tangent line. So we just plug in b, right? So the real difference between the formula for the tangent line up here and the formula for our estimate down here is that we've just plugged in x equals b. That's really the only difference.
So this formula for the linear approximation is nothing special, right? This isn't something new or sort of not even like a small manipulation for a particular application. It is literally just the tangent line formula that we've already talked about applied where x equals b. That's it. Now, it's worth sort of a comment here that um, this formula takes different forms sort of depending on the discipline. Like um, if you're doing sort of different applications of math or if you're in sort of other science classes that are using this like physics versus uh, chemistry versus whatever, um, the same idea is sometimes captured with different notations. So we'll do sort of a quick bit on that. And in particular, a lot of this comes down to this differential form, um, which is probably review at this point, depending on uh, what sort of the class has done. But the idea of a differential form, just to make sure, uh, is that it's this small change in the x and y direction. So if you remember when we did instantaneous rates of change, we talked about sort of squishing together the x values, which made the y values get really close together. And we took the limit of that process, right, to get that instantaneous rate of change. But as we sort of pick closer and closer values, that's what we talk about and that's what we mean when we talk about differential forms. Um, and in particular, the differential is usually recorded as this dx or delta x. So you might see this as this dx here or delta the triangle delta x. Um, and the important bit here is that that's the small change in the x direction. And so the idea with linear approximation is you want to make the sort of gap between the easy to calculate point and the hard to calculate point as small as possible so that you're sort of traveling along that tangent line as little as possible to make the estimate as close as possible. So the idea here is that that dx is usually going to represent that change, that going from the small point, uh, the easy to calculate point to the hard to calculate point, that b to a or a to b, whichever way you're looking at it. Um, because we want that to be small, and so we, that's sort of where the differential comes in. So one of the ways that we see this then is instead of having the sort of more um, obvious line form where it's that, you know, f prime of a times b minus a plus f of a, right, where the b minus a bit is that x minus a form, um, sometimes you will replace that b minus a with this dx, right, and this is one of the differential form versions of this. Another way is you might replace it with this um, delta x down here, right? So either way, it's sort of worth knowing or worth remembering that it's the same idea. This is exactly the same sort of thing. It's just that we are sort of writing it in a different format depending on the discipline. They all have their own conventions, okay? All right, so what do we do? So linear approximation really is nothing more than just getting a tangent line. It's an application of finding a tangent line and it turns out to be super useful, which is why it sort of comes up a lot and why it's worth discussing, but it's not a new idea compared to what we've done already, okay? The formula is sort of different um, sort of by convention in different disciplines. So we've seen a few options, the b minus a versus the dx versus delta x, but they're all the same idea, right? So the notation may vary, the vocabulary may vary, but they're all representing this idea of finding a tangent line and traveling along that tangent line to get an estimate at some difficult to calculate point uh, using some sort of easy to calculate point as an anchor, okay? So that is that.